So, I would like to welcome you to lecture 16 of 2FH3. This time we'll talk about the calculation of resistance and capacitance between two conductors. And this lecture is really um, based, based, like it's based on all many concepts we discussed earlier. So, um, and actually some of the examples we'll solve, it, we'll solve in this lecture are not new. Uh, we have seen similar examples before in previous lectures. Uh, we cover here chapter 6, pages 239 to 256. We have a situation here where we have two conductors. Uh, first conductor which is kept at a positive potential and the second conductor which is kept at a negative potential. There is a battery connecting both of them so it's keeping a voltage difference of V between them. Um, when we have something like this, as in the case of a coaxial cable, in a coaxial cable you have the inner conductor, you have the outer conductor. Um, usually what the, the desired direction of current flow is that one of the currents uh, will flow out from the page, the other one will flow into the page. So if we really have something like this voltage applied between them, we should like to see current flowing here out of the page, and for the other one current is flowing into the page. But in reality, we because the the uh, the dielectric between them may not be ideal. The dielectric here in the region between them may not be an ideal dielectric. In in real in in, in uh, ideally we assume it's epsilon r and there is no conductivity. But uh, in reality there is some conductivity and uh, because of the existence of the electric field pointing from the uh, positive conductor to the negative conductor you get the current flowing and we know very well that the value of this current J is equal to sigma E so it's going to be parallel to the direction of E and so and once you have this current density you can integrate it over a closed surface to get a surrounding say the positive conductor to get the total current flowing laterally from one conductor to the other this is not this is different from the current flowing out from the beach and flowing into the beach through some load which is not shown this is an undesired current that flows through the dielectric. Um, in, uh, usually we use very good insulators, but still we can get very tiny current flowing between them. So our target here is how to calculate this current. Well, we already know Poisson equation, so we start by saying that Nabla squared V is equal to zero. We solve Poisson equation to get Poisson and Laplace in general to get uh, the potential as a function of R. Once you have the potential, then you can get the electric field that's as minus the gradient of V. Once you have the electric field, then you have the uh, current density as equal to sigma E. And uh, once you have the current density, you can integrate it over a surface surrounding one of the conductors to get the total current flowing from the positive conductor to the negative conductor. Now you have the total current and you have the potential difference between them. You can define the resistance here R. Uh, as um, in this case V over I or sometimes you define the conductance G as I over V and this will give us the uh, this conductance or this resistance and uh, as I said this is not really the desired conductance or resistance this is due to the uh, finite to the value of the conductivity which should be ideally zero but it's not really zero so as I explained in the previous slide this is a procedure for calculating the resistance between two conductors. First you start by solving Poisson or Laplace equation depending on the situation. Usually we don't have volumetric charge density so we start with Laplace equation and then we solve the boundary value problem to get V of R. We determine the potential at every point in the region between the two conductors. Next we apply E equal to the minus gradient of V to get the electric field everywhere in the region between the two conductors. Because of the finite conductivity, this current will, this uh, field will create a current density J, and J is equal to sigma E. Ideally, this J should be zero, the conductivity is zero, but the conductivity is usually very small, but it's not zero. Once you have the current density, you can integrate over uh, one of the surfaces, say the surface surrounding the positive conductor, to get the total current flowing from the positive conductor to the negative conductor. Once you have this current, we can simply see the conductance between these two conductors, is given by the current divided by the voltage difference between the two conductors. So VA and VB, VA is the voltage of the positive conductor, VB is the voltage of the, of the negative conductor. Uh, sometimes, or most of the time, we assume negative conductor is grounded, so the VB is assumed to be zero. Let's take a look at one example on this, on the calculation of the resistance. We have here a disk of thickness T, and uh, it has a radius B. 
and there is a central hole of radius A inside this disc. So um, it looks like two cylinders and uh, the dielectric is in the area between these two cylinders. The inner cylinder has a radius A, the outer cylinder has a radius of B and the thickness of the disc is T. We assume the conductivity of the material between them is sigma and would like to find the resistance and the resistance here will be found between two things. First, between the hole and the rim. So between the hole, the inner hole and the outer rim. So the current is flowing here in the root direction. Or between the two flat sides of the, of the disk. So the current will be flowing in the Z direction. So here these are two different types of currents. One of them is undesired. Probably it is the one between the hole and the rim. The other one is the desired one is between the flat sides of the disk. So the topology of this problem, this is how it looks like. We have an uh, this is this is a disc. This is it has a thickness of T. This is a thickness T. Uh, this is a hollow inner cylinder, and this is an outer cylinder. And the dielectric is between them. So the dielectric is here. The dielectric in this area and this area. I'm showing a cross section. And when you take a top view here, you see an inner an inner hole. This is uh, empty. There is nothing inside. And the rim. And we'd like to find the current flowing from the inner, from the hole to the rim. So the current, so if we apply a voltage difference between the, uh, the, 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 the hole as shown here and the rim, what will be the current flowing in the, in the, in the, in this area? And this, of course, is undesired current because the dielectric between them should be ideal. Uh, it should, it should have, um, zero conductivity. Um, now we start to, as, as the procedure states, we start by applying Laplace uh, equation. Nabla squared V is equal to zero. And this example is some, similar to some examples we have done before in the lectures. Nabla squared V is equal to zero. Of course, we should use here cylindrical coordinates. This is the expression for Laplace and cylindrical coordinates. So we multiply by rho and then we integrate to get a constant. We divide by rho. So we get that partial V partial rho is equal to C1 over rho. And then we integrate uh, rho one more time, v one more time, so we get c1 ln rho plus c2. And then we apply the two boundary conditions. We assume that the voltage at the inner radius when rho is equal to a is equal to v naught, and uh, the voltage at the outer radius when rho is equal to b is zero. And then we get an expression for the voltage v. Once you have the expression for the voltage v, we calculate the current, the electric field E as minus the gradient of v should be flowing from the inner conductor to the outer conductor, from the positive conductor to the negative conductor. And then we can get uh, the, cu the current J. And then once we have done that, we integrate over a service. And the service here is really the service of a, of a cylinder. Service of a cylinder of radius rho to calculate the total current flowing from the inner conductor, from the inner hole to the, to the rim. So now once we found the voltage V, we express V as a function of C1 and C2, we apply the two boundary conditions. When rho is equal to A, the, the radius of the hole, we get V is equal to V naught. So this gives us that V naught is equal to C1 ln A plus C2. Now if rho is equal to B, which is the radius of the, of the rim, the external rim, we get the voltage is equal to zero, then we get a second equation. We can solve the equation 1 and the equation 2 for C1 and C2 as we did before in lectures. We subtract, C2 will cancel. You get uh, C1 ln A minus C1 ln B is equal to V0. Ln A minus ln B will give us ln A over B. So we end up with C1 equal to V0 over ln A over B. Now, from this equation here, we can see that C2 is equal to minus C1 ln B. So we have now the second constant, which is this one here. We substitute C1 and C2 into the expression of the voltage to get the complete expression for the potential. If we substitute for C1, which is shown here, and for C2, which is shown here, uh, you can take V0 over ln A over B as a common term. This will give you ln rho minus ln B, which is ln rho over B. So this is the expression for the potential. And as the procedure states, once we have the potential, you start to get the electric field. Electric field is equal to minus gradient V. But because V is only a function of rho in this case, so the gradient would have only one component, which is the rho component, which is minus partial V partial rho in the rho direction. So this is the expression for the electric field. If you differentiate this one relative to rho, you get 1 over rho over B multiplied by 1 over B, with a negative sign, of course, because of the gradient. So you get this expression for the electric field. So the electric field, of course, I'm not showing it's something is missing here. 
this will be of course in the root direction and the negative sign, sign should be there because ln a over b is negative so this if you correct it with a negative sign it becomes ln b over rho, ln b over a which is positive now positive term so the, the electric field it changes as 1 over rho and the constant here is v naught over ln b over a so I know now the electric field at any point in the region between the rim and the, and the, and the hole now we can get the current flowing from the hole to the rim g is equal to sigma e so you multiply this term here this term here the electric field by sigma you get the current density and of course this current density to be accurate it's flowing in the root direction and its units is in ampere per meter squared okay so now once we have the current density we need to get the total current we get to get total current flowing from the hole to the rim so we have to integrate over the surface of a cylinder I explain, as I explained earlier to get the complete current so I'm showing you the surface again just a cross section this is a surface and this is just a cross section because this surface has a height of T uh, of course if we select a small element on this surface here this will give us rho d phi here this is rho d phi and uh, the the height of this one is 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 dz and of course we'll integrate dz from 0 to t so um you carry out the integral you multiply j dot ds j in the root direction ds is also in the root direction uh you take all the terms of uh, j that are constants out so you end up with 1 over rho multiplied by ds which is rho d phi dz rho will cancel with rho the integral of d phi over the complete 2 pi will give you 2 pi. The integral of z over the height of the disk from 0 to t will give you t. Now you can simplify things a little, a little, a little further. Uh, you divide, you get, you're, you are, you are looking now for the uh, resistance or looking for the conductance. It depends. If you divide v naught over i, then you are getting a resistance. Then this will be 1 over this term. And 1 over this term will give you ln b over a over 2 by 2 t sigma. And of course you can get the conductance which will be the inverse of this term. So this, is, this now gives you the resistance between the, ho the hole in the middle and the outer rim. And the current as we agreed is flowing in the radial direction in this non-ideal dielectric. This was part A of this question. Part B wants to look at it in a, com in a little bit different way. So the current, we apply a voltage between the top disk surface and the bottom disk surface. Second part, what's happening, it's a little bit different because now we, we, we connect, uh, we connect a, a battery between the top surface, the top surface of this cylinder and the bottom surface. So you can see the battery is connected this way. So current now is not flowing in the root direction. Current is flowing in the z direction. Our actually neg negative z. It doesn't matter. It depends how we define z. But it's flowing from the top surface to the bottom surface. Now, because if we assume that t, this is uh, this is the parameter t here. This is the thickness of the um, of the uh, of this disk. If we assume that t is small enough, then this is really a barrel blade capacitor. And if you apply a voltage v naught between the top blade and the bottom blade. The electric field is equal to V naught over T. It becomes uniform. The, the field does not really change with position. There is no fringing field. So the electric field is equal to V naught over T. And I'm not here going to both directions. I understand it's flowing from the top blade to the bottom blade. This, this electric field will result in a current density J flowing again from the top blade to the bottom blade. So you multiply by sigma. So it's equal to sigma V naught over T. In order to get the total current, of course, you can carry out an integral over the area. And the area here is this area. It is the area between two, two circles. I'm just showing you a cross section of this area. But because the current is uniform, I don't have to read to carry out an integral. I can simply say that the current, total current is equal to the current density multiplied by the area. And the area is the area between these two circles here. So it's equal to pi b squared minus a squared. And this is what I did here. I multiplied by pi b squared minus a squared. Why did I do all this? I want to get a ratio between v naught over i, the voltage applied and the current flowing. Now, if you get this ratio v naught over i, so it becomes 1 over the other terms. So this will give you t over pi sigma b squared minus a squared. And this, of course, is in ohms. So you can see we have a completely different value depending on the direction of flow of the current.